to the vaping epidemic in America. And tonight we're joined by Lauren Etter, investigative reporter at Bloomberg News. Her book, The Devil's Playbook, Big Tobacco, Jewel, and the Addiction of a New Generation, documents the rise of the now beleaguered e-cigarette giant Jewel Labs. Ms. Etter, thank you so much for joining us. Let's start with the latest news. Jewel just agreed to a $40 million settlement with the state of North Carolina over allegations that it used deceptive practices to target e-cigarettes to young people. The company denies any wrongdoing. How big of a deal is this settlement, and what does it mean for the hundreds of other lawsuits that the company now faces? It's definitely a table setter for the rest of these lawsuits that the company is now facing. It's it's not a huge amount of money in terms of other tobacco uh, settlements that we've seen, but it definitely sets a stage for what could be future settlements. This is the company, Jewel, trying to regain the trust of the public, trying to reach an agreement with all of these uh, attorney general, attorneys general and other uh, parties as it tries to set the reset button so it can come back uh, and continue selling its product. And Jewel says that e-cigarettes give adult smokers an alternative to combustible cigarettes and actually reduces the harm associated with tobacco, including as a cessation device. You're highly critical of the company, but based on your research, has it done anything positive? Well, certainly uh, the the original goal, which was to of the founders of Jewel, which was to help adult smokers quit smoking. There are 34 million adult smokers in America today, and cigarette smoking remains one of the, the leading causes of preventable death. So the idea that you could switch smokers off of a combustible product like a cigarette, which we know to be deadly, onto something that is less risky or less harmful, like an e-cigarette, that certainly is a potential contribution to public health. The danger is that you end up in initiating a new generation of nicotine users, like teenagers, which uh, causes a, an entirely new set of problems. So those are the two issues that the company is facing. And the FDA is now reviewing whether Juul's vaping products can stay on the market and is expected to make a decision early September. Meanwhile, the company says that it's, quote, resetting and trying to combat underage vaping while also reducing harm to adult smokers. What do you think will happen? Could these e-cigarettes be pulled from the market? That's definitely an option. I mean, the F it's absolutely in the FDA's court right now. They can decide whether or not Juul gets to continue selling its product or not. I would be highly surprised if the FDA did pull, pull Juul's product. Uh, number one, because the FDA is engaged in its own sort of public health campaign, which involves reducing the level of nicotine in combustible cigarettes to make them non-addictive or minimally addictive. As part of that strategy, the FDA FDA is saying that they want those adult smokers to be able to switch over to something that's less harmful, like an e-cigarette. So I find, I think it would be highly unlikely for the FDA to pull the biggest e-cigarette maker right now, product right now at a time when they're trying to shift adult smokers away from cigarette smoking. And in your book, you write that the Jewel founders adopted a so-called Silicon Valley model of hypergrowth. What does that mean? And why do you think that that was so problematic? They tried to grow as quickly as possible. They got a bunch of venture capital funding. They they tried to spread their product into as many users' hands as possible, just like any other consumer product and any other tech company or startup company would. The problem with that is that it ended up getting into the wrong hands. So in the as they sought to grow extremely quickly in order to increase their valuation, which they did, they ended up the product ended up getting into the hands of teenagers, which caused this youth epidemic of nicotine. Use. So by growing too quickly, I think that they sacrificed at least at, at least uh, temporarily sacrificed their opportunity to serve that adult smoker market. They it tarnished their reputation. It set them back immensely in terms of uh, their product development cycle. And so now they're essentially trying to regain the public trust. And then you also write about Jewel's collision with big tobacco. What happened there? By the time that Juul came around in 2015, this company from Silicon Valley had innovated much faster than Big Tobacco. And so Big Tobacco find it, found itself behind the ball. And as they tried to catch up, they realized that they couldn't out-innovate Silicon Valley or Juul. So in 2018, Altria, the maker of Marlboro cigarettes, invested $12.8 billion in Juul, taking a 35% share of the company and ended up basically 
actually, um, you know, now becoming a part owner of the company. So um, that was part of the part of what I meant by the collision. Um, but also, Juul had baked into its DNA a lot of the tactics that Big Tobacco had used over the years that had been so criticized for, such as marketing, their marketing practices, targeting youth, um, you know, rolling out a very a highly addictive product. Um, their nicotine product contained five percent five percent nicotine, which was the highest on the market. So, um, so essentially, now these two companies are joined at the hip, and uh, we're going to find out soon whether or not their merger or sorry their partnership is going to be sustained because the FTC is actually challenging that. And if we can get you to take your crystal ball out for a moment, do you think that young people will continue to get addicted to nicotine products as these industries evolve? Yeah, it's a really interesting question. And I think that there's certainly an incentive on behalf of the e-cigarette industry to contain that uh, youth usage and the initiation. However, as, as these products become more widely available and as uh, more adult smokers switch from cigar uh, combustible cigarettes to e-cigarettes, I think that you're going to see a, a lot more innovation in the nicotine market as essentially big tobacco morphs into more of the uh, nicotine industry. So you're going to see more of these products, and I think it's going to be very challenging for the FDA and for regulators to keep those out of the hands of the, the uh, younger population, which is essentially the next generation for these uh, for these companies. Lauren Eder, The Devil's Playbook, Big Tobacco, Jewel, and the Addiction of a New Generation. It is available wherever books are sold. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.